Hey everyone, welcome back. So we just did a reading from our reference book and we just heard some examples of animals using or having different pitches and different amplitudes in the waveforms that they make. So we're gonna do some practice with sorting sounds now. In Amplify, we have something called the sorting tool. In the sorting tool, there's, there's several of them and we can actually drag things around that's gonna help us show our ideas about how sounds are different. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna sort images to show how volume and amplitude are related. We're gonna decide which images show loud sounds and which show quiet sounds. We're gonna place each image in the correct column. So I'm gonna to go to the sorting tool and it looks like I have this side is loud sounds. This side is quiet sounds. And I've got some different pictures here. First thing I'm gonna do is click and look at the instructions. The instructions tell me, look at each image and decide whether it represents a loud sound or a quiet sound. Do. Images with purple dots go in the purple spaces and images with red dots go in the red spaces. We're going to place each image in the correct column. Well, I'll tell you what. It looks like we have low volume level, sound wave, high volume level, sound wave. Hmm. So this first one, low volume level, it has a pink dot, so it's either gonna go here or here. Take a second and say out loud if you think it should go in loud sound or quiet sound. I bet you are telling me that this should go in the quiet sound because it's a low volume level. If the volume is low on the TV, it's really quiet. And you know what? Let's look at this one next because it's a pink dot. High volume level. Well, if the TV is on high, I think that's gonna be a loud sound. Now we have two different images of waveforms. So I've got a taller image and a shorter image, different amplitudes. I want you to say out loud where you think I should put this one. I bet you got this right and I bet you said quiet sound for this. Because if I look at these two images, I've got very low amplitude here and we know that low amplitude happens when it's a quiet sound. I've got higher amplitude here and we know that higher amplitude, we saw this in the simulation, is a louder sound. So we just did that for volume. Now we're going to do that for wavelength and pitch. So let's go back into, let's go into, rather, the other sorting tool. Again, let's read the instructions. The instructions say, look at each image and decide whether it represents a sound with a low pitch or a sound with a high pitch. Do. Images with purple dots go in the purple spaces and images with red dots go in the red spaces. Place each, place each image in the correct column. Now, we heard a bunch of different instruments in the simulation. So we have a flute, and a double bass, two different instruments. One of those instruments has a low pitch and one has a high pitch. Take a second and then I want you to say out loud which one, flute or double bass, should go in the low pitch. Awesome. I bet you said double bass. I remember in The Sim that almost had like a growl sound, it was super low. And the flute is a really high pitched instrument. It has a very high sound to it. So the next thing that we need to do is decide which one of these waveforms should go in which box. So one of these shows something with a high pitch and one shows something with a low pitch. The amplitude's the same, so the volume's the same. So I want you to tell me 
Should this one go in the low pitch or the high pitch? Say out loud. So hopefully you're able to tell me this goes in the high pitch and this goes in the low pitch. I know this because high pitch sounds have the waveforms close together and low pitch sounds have the waveforms further apart. And that's what we saw here. So let's go back to our investigation question. What are some ways sounds can be different from one another? Well, I know we talked about volume and pitch. Those are two ways that sounds can be different from each other. Now, what makes the volume of sounds different? You got a piece of paper, just write down in a couple words. What, it, what is it about the waveform that makes the volume different? And then I'm gonna have you do the same thing. What makes the pitch of sounds different? On a piece of paper, write down just in a couple words, what makes the pitch of a, or what about the waveform makes the pitch different? And come back when you are ready. Now, this is gonna be a great way to check your answers that you just wrote down. So we're gonna look at the arrow that shows amplitude in this diagram. How would you place an arrow? Oh, I'm actually gonna pause there. Look at the arrow that shows amplitude. I see this orange arrow here. It's showing from the middle of the wave to the crest, the peak. And then the question is, how would you place an arrow that shows wavelength? Okay. I know that wavelength is the distance from one peak to another. So that makes me think I could draw an arrow like from this peak to that peak. And if you see here, that's exactly what has been drawn. I have an arrow from this peak to the next peak. So the diagram has changed because the wavelength arrow has appeared. It shows the distance between two wave peaks. This is my amplify arrow. I'm sorry, amplitude arrow. This is my pitch arrow. How loud it is, what the pitch is. And that brings us to two important ideas. So one, when sound waves have different amplitudes, we hear sounds with different volumes. When sounds have different wavelengths, we hear sounds with different pitches. Now we're gonna do one last thing. So you need a piece of paper and you need a pencil. We are going to listen to a really fun sound and you're gonna use what you know about amplitude and wavelength to first visualize what the waveform for the sound looks like and then draw what you visualized. So I'm gonna play this clip twice. So listen all, um, I'm gonna ask you to listen carefully. The first thing I want you to do is just close your eyes and listen. And then I want you to visualize what would the sound wave look like? We're gonna draw it after, but this first time, just listen please and visualize. Man, that's a pretty weird sound. Now, visualize in your head. That sound had some different volumes and that sound had some different pitches. What would change about the waveform? I'm gonna play it one more time and then I'm going to have you pause the video so you can actually draw your waveform. Now, have out your piece of paper. I'll play it one more time, and then you're gonna pause and draw. All right, please pause the video, and I want you to draw what you think that waveform sounds like. When you're ready, press play, and we'll come back together. So I bet your teacher is excited to see the waveform that you drew. 
And you probably took what you knew about pitch and volume and you thought like, oh, I heard the sound change in its pitch and I heard it change in its volume and I showed those somehow in my waveform. Now I'm gonna show you my waveform, which is not necessarily the best way to draw this. But here's my waveform. So a couple things I heard. I heard the sound get louder. I heard it go woo, woo. And so I drew my waves getting bigger amplitude and then I heard the sound get quieter. So I drew a smaller amplitude. Then I heard it get louder again. So I drew a bigger amplitude and quieter again. Now the other thing that I saw was I heard the pitch change. We heard like woo, woo, woo. And when it gets that higher pitch, I drew my waves closer together. So that's woo, 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 woo. Yours might've looked the same as mine. It might've looked different and that's both okay. Scientists uh, all have different ways of modeling. So remember, we've been investigating this question, why are some sounds different from other sounds? We're gonna keep investigating both this idea and how does the dolphin calf know that its mother is calling it as we keep going in this chapter. I'll see you soon and I hope you have a great day.